All right. So again, uh, thank you for joining us for this session today. Uh, I really appreciate you just taking some time uh, and wanting to learn a little bit more about the UW-Madison Leadership Certificate Program. But also, I am interpreting you being here as uh, being interested in fostering and growing student leadership development, which I, I'm particularly really interested in and passionate about. Uh, so my name is Larry Colon. I'm the Leadership Development Specialist here at the Center for Leadership and Involvement. Uh, Pre-COVID, our office was located on the third floor of the Red Gym. Uh, I know the concept of office is now more fluid now. <laughs> uh, and I use he, him, his pronouns. Uh, I also wanted to give my colleague, Christina, an opportunity to introduce uh, herself as well. Hi everyone, my name is Christina Rattel. I'm the Student Employment Manager in the Office of Student Financial Aid and use uh, she, her, hers pronouns. Awesome. Thank you, Christina. And uh, I, I'm really appreciative for Christina since she's going to be helping me out in the background in terms of uh, just taking a look at the chat um, and other like technical aspects as well. Much appreciated so that I can, you know, focus on content. So uh, th this session is part of our series of our Engage Leaders Through Employment program. And of course, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get more towards the end of the presentation. Uh, it looks like as we saw through the chat, uh, besides uh, Nicole engaging more deeply with the leadership framework, it looks like folks are still wanting to maybe learn a little bit more about the intricacies of this program and maybe what benefits it provides for your students. Um, so I'm hoping that I can help shed a light on that and provide that specific focus as we kind of think a little bit more about this program and how it might be uh, relevant and beneficial for your students. Uh, so in terms of things that I want to cover, um, just three things. So one, just talk a little bit more about like why this program exists, how it kind of came about, uh, and how it's situated here at our, at our university. Uh, and then from there, I'm hoping to talk through the details of the leadership certificate. It, it, it's very possible you've already seen our website and if you've already taken a look at what those different requirements are. Really, my hope for today is to help you understand, like, why are those requirements set up to the way that they are, how it might interface in terms of the academic, co-curricular, and extracurricular parts of our students. Um, and maybe that'll give you some more insight in terms of, you know, like, like Dana was mentioning in the chat, like, how do I make better recommendations for this program? And maybe that's the connection you want. Uh, but like Nicole was mentioning about uh, integrating the framework into her work, uh, this could also help you think a little bit more about, like, what would a partnership with our office look like? And how could you uh, more specifically situate aspects of the leadership certificate uh, into your like employment experience. And then from there, I was going to talk a little bit about ELE and share resources. Um, other thing too, I, I know that a lot of us have become better experts in terms of this virtual environment. Uh, but I also want to respect that we're all in different spaces here. You know, I'm not sure if you have uh, certain living situations or, or children or taking care of parents or anything like that. Uh, keep your camera on or off. That's totally up to you. I, I have no qualms with that. Uh, since we are a smaller group, I think there's a lot of benefits to being in a smaller group. Uh, I welcome you to unmute yourself while I'm presenting if you'd like to ask a question. Um, you don't necessarily have to use the raise your hand feature. Just interrupt me, ask your question, happy to answer that. Uh, also, some folks aren't comfortable with just talking out loud like that. Uh, if you'd prefer to write questions in the chat, Christina will be probably taking a look at that and we can talk about it at, at the end as well. So I want to make sure that you feel supported and that the concepts kind of make sense as they kind of go along. Uh, so yeah, let's kind of get started here. So I believe the leadership certificate is a pretty uh, valuable tool just because it shows that we value how students are connecting maybe the concepts that they have into the classroom outside of it, particularly through their co-curricular experiences. I like to define co-curricular as those experiences that have like specific learning outcomes attached to it, which make, maybe makes it different from extracurricular. Uh, some of the examples of co-curricular like student government and advocacy, uh, being part of leadership programs, 
uh, being part of student organizations as some examples. Um, and through this commitment and wanting to recognize and value those experiences that students have outside of the classroom, uh, we also believe that there's a lot of value in being able to reflect and think about those experiences in an interconnected way, but ultimately for the idea that our students can be positive change agents. Um, I, I think that's really valuable just because uh, leadership as a concept can be really ambiguous. Um, and I think that, like, for example, for me in my office, I think part of my responsibility is to make that more concrete and to make leadership interwoven in the different lived experiences that our students have. Uh, so as a result, uh, in 2002, we developed this campus-wide program, so the UW-Madison Leadership Certificate. Um, and back then, uh, it was a really interesting context just because I think we awarded one certificate in 2004. Uh, it might be one or two. But now we have over 400 undergraduate, graduate, and professional students that are concurrently enrolled. Uh, and I think this past year, we had about 120 plus folks receive the leadership certificate, and that's just growing. Um, so that's great. It's great that folks view this as a valuable and useful resource and that they want to integrate that as part of their learning. Um, back then, we used the social change model to inform how we thought about leadership through the certificate program. And in 2015, uh, we revised it to connect with our UW-Madison leadership framework. Very briefly, that was just a way for us to conceptualize and define how leadership exists here on our campus. And it uses uh, a variety of like 10 different foundational leadership theories to inform all of that. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the leadership framework, that is another session that we offer through the Yale E program. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So besides that first point that I just mentioned, the, the second point that I want to get across is uh, this is a campus-wide certificate program. So it's a little different than some of the other certificate programs you see administered through specific majors or through specific academic departments. What I'm doing in the background is the administrative processes. So managing our advising unit, uh, making sure that we're doing sufficient outreach, different things like that. Um, and I think there's a lot of benefits to it being a campus-wide program. Uh, given that the program and curriculum itself is so based on student experiences, one of my favorite parts of my job is connecting with different schools, colleges, departments, and units just to kind of learn more about what leadership experiences you're instilling with your students and then seeing how it applies to completing the leadership certificate program. Um, Yes, there is that co-curricular part that I kind of mentioned. Uh, there aren't many. I think there's just one academic component associated with this, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But it's more about that outside of the classroom experiences that we want to unpack and derive those lessons from, from student learning. Uh, we try to be as accessible as possible. Uh, so what I mean by that with that four, fourth bullet point, we define good academic standing as having a 2.0 or better. So hopefully that's not the, uh, the crux for someone not being able to participate in this program. Uh, very frequently students enroll in the program thinking that it's more of like, like an award program. And of course there's leadership awards across campus. That, that is not the focus. The, the focus is the reflection that they'll be doing in the program and, and the, the leadership studies learning that they'll be doing. And then finally, uh, a very frequent question that I get asked is, how long does it take? Uh, <laughs> just from a very broad level, I would argue that leadership development never ends. You know, <laughs> Once you have complex thought, I think leadership development is a lifelong process. Uh, but for receiving the certificate, at least four semesters. If students take even more time with the program, I think there's so many more benefits they can unlock about that. So if you have any questions about those specific bullet points, feel free to kind of put those in the chat. Happy to take a look at that. But hopefully that helps with kind of understanding uh, what comprises the program. So a lot of benefits, I think. Uh, one of the first points is, yes, academic work is essential, especially when you're thinking about um, post-graduation plans, cementing learning, being uh, a very effective citizen, uh, being part and learning of the Wisconsin idea. But I think that 
On top of academics, we should also be valuing the other experiences students have, whether that's research, internships, student jobs, uh, their involvement in student organizations, because there's a lot of learning that's happening there. So this certificate is a way to highlight that and value that for students. Um, some folks are more interested in like the physical aspects of the program. Um, so one of the benefits here is that uh, we host, uh, if we were in person, a physical ceremony. Um, what we did in the, in the past spring, we did a virtual celebration by constructing profiles for students and getting uh, speakers around campus to share messages with them. Uh, so if you're thinking about within your employment experience, like how do I showcase what they're doing in the workplace and the lessons that they've learned, but also maybe you're a smaller department or unit or you have a very busy like programming calendar or administrative calendar, uh, our office helps with that because we host a ceremony. So this could be like a benefit or an opportunity that you can provide for students to say like, hey, this is a great way to showcase the work that you did here with us. And I'm gonna be at that ceremony so that I can celebrate you and your accomplishments and maybe meet some of your friends or family if there was, this was an in-person setting. Um, other great points too, and there will be another session through ELE where we'll talk about uh, student reflection in the workplace, but the leadership certificate is a great way to intentionally think about experiences, maybe through that employment experience, and see and track how they're developing or how they're doing within themselves with leadership. Just to give some examples about uh, professional skills or abilities that connect with like leadership skills or abilities might be like, what are their communication styles in the workplace? Uh, how are they working effectively with groups? If they're setting up a strategy for a project, are they being very clear with like the outcomes or deadlines or things like that? I think that the lessons that they're unpacking in the leadership certificate directly connect what is happening in the workplace. And you can connect those together so that you can have those conversations. Um, and finally, um, I think what's really powerful or strong about the UW Madison experience is our focus on the liberal arts aspect and especially from the undergraduate experience, considering all the different um, uh, general degree requirements that students need to complete and go all over the place and kind of think about what are different academic skills or knowledge that I can connect and what can I pull from that uh, to put into like my professional experience or post-graduation experience. So this certificate is a way to uh, get all those experiences together and build those commonalities. So there might be more lessons that you'll learn from your students. You know, I, I think that for a lot of our students that engage in employment experiences, there are other things that they value. And if you know that, uh, you can make their employment experience so much more like rich and full of depth. Uh, so I think that's some of the benefits there. Um, so maybe you've uh, kind of got an account about like, what will they be learning through the certificate program? And I, I think that that first bullet point, not, not enough justice there. Like I, very commonly would students come and do our assessment to kind of see like, where are they at in their leadership development? One of the lowest competencies students typically get, specifically undergraduate students, is a lower self-awareness. Um, and it makes sense, you know, if you have lower self-awareness, maybe you should do more reflection. And I think that's where the leadership certificate really helps. Uh, students are busy, you know, they're juggling work, classes, volunteerism. Um, this certificate essentially forces them to create space where they're intentionally reflecting on all those different experiences. Um, and the other good point there with that second bullet point, um, if you're doing that reflection, then you can come up with a plan for how you want to keep improving or think strategically about how you're using your different leadership skills. Um, so we have assignments in the program that helps them write that all down and kind of think about all of that as well. Uh, sorry, I have a question in the chat. Max, that, that is a great question. And um, I will answer that towards the end. There are some templates or forms that could be helpful for you through our leadership library, and I'll talk about that a little bit better. Thank you for asking that question, Max. Um, so yeah, so it, I think it's valuable to have a set leadership development plan, and we have assignments that help you do that through the certificate program. 
And I've already talked to the third and fourth bullet points, but uh, I think this is probably a good segue to just talk about uh, the different aspects of the certificate. So um, the, the main major aspect that students will work on is make sure that they're thinking about leadership in different domains of practice. So the ones that we kind of defined are the ones up on the screen. And the, the one that is most common for students to complete is organizational group leadership. Um, if you think about that from an employment context, uh, depending on like what your workplace kind of looks like, uh, I think that's where that experience kind of fits there. Um, hopefully our students are engaging in opportunities that have them work with other people and get like common tasks or passions or projects kind of across. Um, so if students are typically completing the organization and group leadership component, where the involvement requirements is really useful is that we're encouraging a diversity of experiences. Um, and I do believe your employment experience can connect with these other involvement requirements depending on what resources you have available or what you would like to have as part of your learning outcomes for your employment experience. Um, you could have civic engagement as part of that. Um, maybe there are office projects that you can do together to go do some volunteerism out in the community. Or maybe that's something that you encourage as part of like that student's portfolio uh, and then you create time to reflect with them to see like, what is it like to work with community rather than on community? Um, the other aspect, trainings and workshops, that can also potentially be part of the employment experience as well. Um, I, I definitely think that through employment, that is a very strong location where you can start instilling principles and uh, knowledge about leadership development. Um, and I do think that professional development and leadership development uh, work very nicely together. Uh, maybe through your onboarding, that's a location where students are learning a little bit more about leadership development. So through our ELE program, we have other workshops we'll be doing later where you can kind of think about that a little bit more, uh, specifically that student reflection in the workplace uh, session that'll be coming up soon. Um, so in case you wanted to see other experiences on here, um, it, it can be paid or unpaid. So depending on what the employment experience you're offering, whether that's like a set student job where folks are making a wage or salary, or if that's more of an internship type experience that it might be unpaid, that can still count with the leadership certificate. Um, so, you know, I think that's just a good way to kind of ground it and see how that works with this program. Um, now, for civic engagement, I know that I mentioned as an example, like, is there time that you can take within their, their work time to go out and do volunteerism in the community? O obviously, that's a very difficult thing to do for a lot of units. Um, you know, there are administrative processes that need to continue. There are other aspects of your mission that you have to continue working on. Um, so there are other things that students could do that you can encourage them to go and kind of help. And, and the main one being the Badger Volunteers experience that's offered through the Mortgage Center. Um, but I just kind of wanted to mention this and see like, well, how else can you mention that while you're working with students? Um, another aspect too, along with, you know, maybe having limited resources or limited time, depending on what your employment experience looks like, there are multitudes of examples of leadership workshops and trainings that are happening across campus. So that's something that you want to offer to your students, but it's not necessarily something that you can do through your office. Partnering with us or working with the leadership certificate program is a great, great way of ensuring that since I work with different campus partners to evaluate which experiences they're offering. And we also provide a central hub, so like our, our calendar, so that students can kind of take a look at that and see uh, what else can they do? And maybe you can talk about that within your employment experience. Um, and there's also, because uh, Christina's here, uh, awesome leadership development learning opportunities that are offered through student employment, which is through Office of Financial Aid. So I, I think that there's different avenues to kind of think about this as well. So now after talking about that larger uh, involvement requirements section, uh, there is an educational component, just an academic course. I'm just mentioning this for context. I, I don't know that there's necessarily something you can do with the employment experience. 
but our online learning modules, that might be another aspect that you can kind of take into account. So uh, we have kind of like this mini library uh, where we've selected different TED Talks that talk about leadership studies concepts uh, from different angles or perspectives. Um, and they involve the areas of leadership studies and global and cultural competence. Uh, you can also use that as tools within your employment experience so that you can have these conversations with your students. They're 15 minute TED Talks, so that maybe there's a way where you can kind of weave that. Um, and I, I think that would just be great just to be able to, you know, if a student participates in this program, they'll learn more about leadership studies. And then if that reflection could occur in the employment experience, then you can connect more experiences together so students can really see, oh, uh, I can see how leadership development concepts can be really valuable when I'm thinking about my post-graduation plans or I'm thinking about my professional development. And ultimately, so with those other requirements, there's a lot of work that students are putting in. Um, they're trying to be involved as much as possible so they can continue developing their leadership skills. Uh, they're learning about leadership studies concepts with their coursework and with the modules. The reflection requirements is supposed to be like the synthesis of all of that. My hope when I think about how I want students to be positive change agents is that they have something tangible to have and that they can kind of move forward with. Um, so the way that we kind of do that, our, our competency essay is a way for students to think about uh, through leadership theory and reflecting on all those past experiences that I've worked on. How have I grown? Um, what do I want to commit to growing as I think about like my future self and future plans? Uh, with other partners that I've worked on on campus, um, folks have used that tool to include that as part of their employment experience too. So they'll set up check-ins where they talk about different aspects of leadership to help inform what their competence essay will kind of look like. So this is also another potential tool that could be helpful when you're thinking about embedding leadership development into your employment experience. Um, the, the second uh, bullet point about the capstone, uh, that's where we put in that idea of, of being a positive change agent and provide that area where they can think about it or write that. Um, there are, um, there are uh, employment experiences where students have thought about different projects that they've been working on and uh, how they maybe have improved like workflows or they've improved training or they've improved other things that they've worked on. Um, I have seen that described through their capstones because they've thought that their employment experience was a very central part of being a student here. So that could also be a potential tool that you can use or kind of think of in terms of uh, how will a student make a mark? Maybe make a mark within your own unit as well. Uh, it looks like I have a question here from Kate. Uh, I'm just going to read this out loud, Kate, if that's right. Uh, I know that I can't pay a student for doing something that they are getting academic credit for. I think a certificate would be a form of academic credit. How does that all fit? Um, Kate, if you don't mind unmuting or if you'd like to add some more context to that question, um, could, could you explain a little bit more about like, where that question is kind of coming from? Question is kind of coming from? Well, it's coming from my supervisors. I'm in transportation services, which is part of mm -hmm. FP&M, mm -hmm. and we've been told that a student is either doing something for pay or they're doing something for academic credit and that we need to make a distinction and keep that distinction. And so I guess the, it seems foreign to me when I'm doing things for their leadership certificate within employment, it seems to kind of violate what I've been told. And so yeah. how does that fit yeah. and how does this fit with we grow and the other kind of which seems like a parallel kind of student development program. And I assume you're aware of it. Yes, I am aware of We Grow um, and what that student reflection kind of looks like. Um, I, I like to think about uh, the leadership certificate as being like an extension of our leadership framework. So I think that there's different 
uh, levels of depth that you can go in when you're thinking about like student reflection or evaluation in the workplace. Uh, a, a big strength of WeGrow is that you are intentionally thinking about a student's growth and putting in those prescribed check-ins to make sure that you're tracking that and having those conversations with students when you're thinking about that employment experience. It could or could not have questions related to leadership development, depending on what your unit's um, like mission and priorities are and what you have time to do. If you want to engage more deeply with uh, leadership concepts or leadership studies, the framework or the certificate are two great avenues to do that. I, I think that uh, the, the leadership framework or certificate is not necessarily parallel to WeGrow. I think that they kind of build on each other. So you can make the student reflection in the workplace uh, more rich, I think. Uh, and Nicole is providing a really great example in the chat about kind of what that looks like. Um, and, and even after that explanation about like, well, I think that you can connect leadership development and professional development because they're both uh, relevant and contextual and that you can grow the concepts that you're talking about we grow. It's very possible after saying that your supervisor or your unit will still say, well, I don't agree with that. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think that that's something that we necessarily need to talk about in the workplace. Uh, and if that's the case, Kate, I, I would be happy to just talk with you more in depth and see like, you know, well, what what are the outcomes of your office in terms of the student employment experience and how can you integrate this in a way that makes sense for uh, for your unit, but also for your students as well. So does, does that help answer that question, Kate? And it's all I good. Thank you, Max. It's all good. Hey, Max, for coming. I think uh, this is more now something I need to take to my management and ask, but for sure. um, because for I'm sure. not seeing a clear line between employment and credit. So yeah, I'll ask. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And, and Kate, this is a conversation that I've navigated with other campus partners before. Um, so if that is something that you want to talk more in depth as well to like prep for that, I'm, I'm happy to have that conversation with you too, uh, if you want to do that step before talking to your supervisor. So I'll, I'll have a link later in case you want to get in contact and talk more about that. Um, so, sorry, <laughs> now getting back to this piece, uh, you might have questions about like, well, then how do I get students to do the leadership certificate? Is that something that you're interested in? Uh, one common way to help bring that in is maybe making time to have us talk about the program with your students. So, I mean, we have all campus wide informational sessions, one that's happening tonight, by the way. Uh, but I commonly go into campus partner spaces and do sessions for students so that they can learn more there. And I'm going into your space because sometimes students feel more comfortable from that aspect. And then from there, we kind of take it. We take the reins from there. Uh, we have students do the self-assessment so they can learn more about themselves and then we advise them just to help them come up with a plan so that they feel successful in completing the program. So, you know, a lot of content pieces that were kind of mentioned there. In the chat, uh, Christina wrote, put the website for what our leadership certificate is. Um, you can take a look at that and go over those requirements again because I think everything's listed there and hopefully that's helpful. Um, maybe you are interested in integrating the leadership certificate program with your unit. Um, and I guess that's kind of what I was alluding to. Uh, we will be having a workshop where I'll be talking about specific examples that I've set up with various units. And I'm hoping to provide a diversity of examples. So I'm going to talk about uh, a partnership with an academic department, with a scholarship program, uh, with a, a straight like work workplace environment just so that you can see like how other campus partners have helped set this up. Uh, if you're in, interested in participating in that workshop uh, or maybe uh, just learning more about the ELE program, uh, we have this email list. So uh, please sign up for that. And on there, you can indicate what you're interested in as well. Um, there's also our ELE website. So the website's really cool just because we have more information about the ELE model. Uh, we'll also list what all of our future workshops will kind of look like as well. Uh, you'll notice there on the right hand side that these are our planned um, sessions that we want to do. Uh, some of the ones that we have coming up are 
an explanation about like why leadership capacity is important and how that connects with professional development concepts. I'm super excited about that because there's some research that I did that I'm excited to just share. And that could be helpful when you're thinking about how do I explain to like uh, my director or my supervisor about why we should value doing this type of work in the workplace. Uh, we'll be doing a more in-depth session about the leadership framework. Again, that's also on our website if you want to sign up for that. Um, and we'll also be doing the uh, student reflection of the workplace session. There's other ones there that we're not doing this semester, but do keep a lookout. So uh, if you join our email list or take a look at our website, we'll be listing that as well. Um, also, student employment through the Office of Financial Aid, they want to make sure that you are as supported as possible when you think about having these conversations with students. Uh, so we have that link there as well um, to kind of help. So yeah, uh, if you have any more questions, uh, I still have about 20-ish minutes where I can kind of discuss. Kate, I know, already know you've asked yours, but I'm happy to answer any others, either from you uh, or from Nicole or Dana, if you have any for me. Um, I guess one thing I um, worry about with um, some of my students is just some of them just don't know how to get involved. I think like that's that civic engagement piece is um, really hard. Like how do I get involved in the community, especially during COVID? Um, and I know Larry, like you said, they can always come talk to you and um, there's that volunteer program and everything. Um, I'm not sure if there's like a list that's being made maybe that especially during times with COVID um, that students can utilize more closely. And I think there's things in Canvas too, but I just don't, for example, wouldn't have access to that probably. Um, is there yeah. more an open access to those opportunities that we would be able to share with our students when we're having conversations with them um, about helping them, just helping them fulfill the certificate? I'm really glad that you mentioned that. So I'm putting two resources in the chat for you here. Um, so again, one of my really close partners is a mortgage center. They focus a lot on civic engagement, which you can think of as like uh, community-based courses, volunteerism, service learning. Um, they created a site where they're mentioning what those different opportunities are. So you'll notice that there, that COVID-19 page. And something that I'm also excited about, previously community-based learning or service learning courses did not count for civic engagement, uh, but I think that they should. So we changed our policy and now they do. So if students are thinking about, um, well, I want an instructor to explain to me why civic engagement is important and then also curate an experience so that I do that on the community, depending on what that looks like, uh, there's that link there in terms of courses. Of course, and you, you know, Nicole, I, I know like what your relationship looks like with your students, but these are all like credit based. So, you know, they should talk to the academic advisor just to see if that makes sense for their schedule. So. Uh, does, does that help answer that question? Yeah, it definitely, um, definitely helps. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right. Uh, Kate, Nicole, any other questions? All right, that's all good. Um, again, I really appreciate your intensiveness, attentiveness and engagement with today. Um, if you do sign up, um, excited to have information your way, and you're always welcome to contact me directly as well if you just feel more comfortable doing that, uh, my email there as well. So thank you so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks so much, Larry and Christina. I appreciate it.